I am alongside the Seine River here in Paris, France. Soon I will be heading to the Moulin Rouge for one of its famous cabaret shows. Then I'll show some nighttime sights around the City of Lights. I did walk along the left bank of the Seine, between the Musée d'Orsay and the Eiffel Tower. Here's a display about auto safety along the Seine. This is the magnificent Pont Alexandre Troy, an incredible, highly decorated Beaux Arts bridge. I like this gilded lizard, that's a neat little detail. I've spotted a Space Invader. Several of these little Space Invaders have popped up all over Paris, along with many other cities around the world. Here is the iconic Eiffel Tower. I did go up and see the views from the second level, and we'll see it later all lit up at night. I was starving at this point in the day, so I got an overpriced crepe outside the Eiffel Tower. This is the legendary Moulin Rouge in Montmartre. I wasn't planning on going here, but I ended up with a ticket, so of course I had to. The Moulin Rouge opened in 1889, and was one of the most important and greatest cabarets here in Montmartre. The Can Can Dance was basically invented at the Moulin Rouge, but this is not the original structure. Sadly, the original was destroyed by a fire in 1915. But seeing this show in the newish Moulin Rouge is still a big deal. The lobby has a gift shop, and I noticed there are lots of prints of Toulouse-Lautrec's lautrecs paintings and posters for the Moulin Rouge. Most of Toulouse-Lautrec's originals were hung inside the original Moulin Rouge. Now they have a no picture or filming rule during the show, but I probably couldn't show the almost naked ladies on YouTube anyways. The theater room itself was very cool. It was definitely what I expected the Moulin Rouge to look like inside. It definitely has that late 1800s bohemian feel to it. There are lots of tributes to this establishment's storied past. I did get to go to the dinner show, which turned out to be four hours long. Two hours of that being the dinner. The food itself came out very slowly, but it was pretty good. And there was some live music. Eventually the actual show started. They also usually do a second performance of the show later at night. It is significantly cheaper to go to that. Now the Moulin Rouge show itself was amazing. And I was sat directly up against the stage. I'm sorry I have no real way of showing you what my seat was like, but I was right at the corner of the central part of the stage that juts out a little bit. So I saw everything very closely. I was literally at eye level, a foot or two away from the performer sometimes. I was occasionally extremely close to their legs and sometimes other parts, so that turned out to be quite the surprise and the experience. Now the performance is very high quality, they had a lot of great sets and costumes, and the performers themselves were all very skilled dancers, and yes, most of them were very scantily clad and topless, and again I was a foot away from these ladies at some points. Of course they did the Can Can, which was pretty awesome to see, at the institution where the Can Can was born. During the heyday of Montmartre, they also did what I believe are known as the red and pink numbers. There was also a sexy circus number with Siamese twins. That was creative. There was one part that was Arabian themed, and during that the central part of the stage that I was next to retracted and opened up to a pool below. And this topless woman jumps into the pool, which I was also incredibly close to, and she starts dancing around with a live boa constrictor that must have been at least 10 or 12 feet long. Not gonna lie, that was one of the coolest things I have ever seen. In between the usual numbers, they had some acts by some incredibly talented acrobats. There was this one roller skating part that's hard to describe, but doing that would require a lot of strength and control. It was very impressive. I did immensely enjoy the show at this famed and storied cabaret. I would recommend just doing it if you're visiting Paris. Also, the lights would go out in between acts. 
and at one point I noticed a feather fell off this dancer's elaborate costume, so when the lights went out, I swept the feather from the stage. So I have this authentic Moulin Rouge dancer feather now. Now I am on a bus, and we're going to pass by some Parisian landmarks as night falls. Here are the Pont Alexandre Trois-Lys to Les Invalides. This is the Grand Palais, built for the Universal Exposition of 1900. It has been closed to visitors for many years now, as a major renovation has been going on. About to turn onto the Champs Elysees. There are lots of bleachers set up along the Champs Elysees for the Bastille Day Parade that will be occurring shortly after my visit. I would love to see that one day. We're passing by Les Invalides, a former veterans hospital that is now a massive military museum. This is the Dome Church at Les Invalides. Napoleon is entombed in a ginormous sarcophagus under that rotunda. Now passing by the École Militaire, the Military Academy of France. It was completed in 1750. 
cannon fight, and if you have a look at the 11th window across on the uh, second level, you can see a cannonball embedded in the wall still. No, it's not there, I just wanted to. Um, but uh, to our right, it is hidden at the moment. Well, I don't know if that's, that building's never been there. That looks like a permanent structure now. But beyond that is the uh, Champ de Mar. So the Champ de Mar is, sorry, I should point out field. Yeah, and uh, Mar, M-A-R-S, because you don't pronounce it. Yes, Champ de Mar. So it's the uh, Martian fields, the campus marshes. And it's like, yeah, give me some money. And they're like, okay. And then you're like, wow, this thing's also making us money. So they just kept it. And it's been here ever since. It gets about, yeah, I was French soldiers in the conflict. Yeah, in two figures on the other end, they represent the four great military uh, races. The Ottoman Turks, the Romans, the Greeks, and the Gauls. Directly ahead of us, this is Palais Chaillot. It was also built for the 1899. Here's the Eiffel Tower all lit up. That's pretty amazing. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see its sparkly light show, which occurs on the hour. In there you'll find the aquarium, and of course a museum. So the Eiffel Tower directly underneath. Alright, all lit up, and perfect for your uh, ink. Alright, so we're just going to park up here. I'll get out of your way so you can jump up here. I was able to get off the bus for a quick look at the Eiffel Tower all lit up. And finally, we're passing by the mighty Arc de Triomphe. On the left, it's angels that are crowning Napoleon. Because of course no man can crown him. Uh, tomorrow, for those doing the walking tour, it's uh, this street here to our right, the sightseeing tour. Yeah. On the left, if you have a look in the arch, can you see those names that I was talking about? So you can see uh, the smaller names here visible. If you look to the left right now, those are the names of different generals. Whereas uh, this one to the left on the bigger side of the arch, those are the battle axis beyond it. So uh, the Arc de Triomphe, it's technically not the beginning, but kind of is uh, of the historical axis. We start from here and this street coming up on our right is the Champs Elysees. Look at it sparkling with rubies and diamonds tonight. So we go from the Arc de Triomphe to the left and down the Champs Elysees to the right. This is so I hope you enjoyed this video. This does mark the end of my first escapade in Europe on this channel, though I intend to do much more, especially here in Paris. So stay tuned to the channel for all sorts of future adventures by subscribing, also consider liking and sharing this video, and checking out my plethora of other videos featuring city tours, museums, historic landmarks, natural wonders, and more, here in Paris, as well as across Europe and America. Thanks for watching!